In 1853, the natural philosopher and great experimentalist Michael Faraday gathered some people around a table like this one. With the lights down low and his volunteers concentrating on contacting the spirit world, Faraday was investigating the existence of ghosts. And that's what we're going to be trying to do today. There was a real interest in Victorian society in everything sort of supernatural and paranormal. So when we think about these seances and table wrapping, what actually happened there? What were Victorians actually trying to do? You have to imagine a bunch of people who would get together into a room with the objective of trying to contact some dimension beyond what we can usually see. Usually this would be the realm of the dead. They would try to correspond with uh, ghosts. They would try to receive some form of communication and the way in which the contact would manifest is that furniture would start to move. So our volunteers are gathered around the table and their hands are placed on the tablecloth. Slowly the table starts to turn. <laughs> we can see the table moving very slowly, very subtly at the moment. Okay, so you felt the table move there, right? I'm sure none of you were intentionally doing that. You know, you're just feeling the table move. Um, and Faraday was interested in why that was happening. People were claiming it was to do with electromagnetism. And so that's partly why he starts to investigate it and he's trying to make some measurements and he's trying to capture some information about what's going on. So I, I've recreated a device that he had made, which I will explain how it works in a bit, but I'm gonna put these um, in front of each of you. You can see there are some finger marks on there um, for you to put your fingers on. Now, I'm just going to get you to do basically exactly the same thing again. Pushing down, you're not trying to wobble the table against the other person, you're not trying to resist any movement, you're going with any movement that you feel happening. You're not fighting against the person opposite you, you're also not fighting against the spirits that might be moving the table. Um, so, uh, let's see what happens this time. Unknown forces uh, were quite common. Uh, Faraday, for example, uh, had discovered the phenomenon of diamagnetism in 1845, which showed that magnetism was a universal force of matter. It was previously only been specific to two types. Uh, of uh, material. So in many ways it was actually quite reasonable for people to write to Faraday saying is there a scientific explanation uh, for uh, these phenomena that are being witnessed and reenacted uh, all over London and all over, the, all over the country. People hear about Victorian scientists like Faraday becoming interested in phenomena of the supernatural. This often sounds quite counterintuitive and you read headlines like he was dabbling in the supernatural and things like that. But it's actually quite natural for scientists wanting to investigate because, you know, there were so many new scientific discoveries, there were so many things being made visible by marvellous devices. You know, we better check out and see what's going on there. By the 1850s, Faraday was arguably the most important scientific figure uh, in the country. He had spent nearly 30 years in the Royal Institution making some fundamental discoveries ranging from the invention of the electric motor in 1821 to the discovery of electromagnetic induction, the principle behind the transformer and the dynamo. And furthermore, he had achieved considerable fame by his lectures at the Royal Institution, both Friday evening discourses but more especially the Christmas lectures. And I think when, he, when, when both his scientific ideas and his religious ideas and beliefs were challenged by spiritualism, by table turning, um, he felt forced to go, in, go public uh, on this with criticism. So what Faraday did as an experimentalist was absolutely typical of Faraday, and that is he developed an experiment uh, to show what the real cause of table turning was. So we can see the needle starting to move. A couple of the needles seem to be moving now. That's followed by very slow movement of the table. Okay, so table still moved. Let me explain exactly what these, these indicators are doing now. It's two boards. There's some glass rods in there so that those boards can slide across each other. Rubber band around it to keep it central. And then we have a needle, our, our indicator needle here. If this board, the top board, gets pushed that way, the needle go the other way and vice versa yeah yeah so Faraday makes this to show that first of all let's say there's a charlatan involved and they're pushing the table around this is going to reveal it because if I you know if I'm I'm the stooge and I push the table that way mm. the needle's going to show it yeah none of you are a plant um, so no one's doing this on purpose but what Faraday realizes is that even earnest volunteers people who are here 
They believe this might work. They don't know how it works. They're not a plant. Ever so subtly, they are pushing side to side. They don't realise it, right? So what this does is it shows you if you're the one who's pushing the table or not. If the table was to move under your hands, so the table is moving before the board, then the needle will point in the direction that the table's going to turn. But if it's you pushing the table, if you're actually slightly subtly moving the table, then the force is coming from above and the needle will move in the opposite direction to the way the table's moving. What that means is you can now keep yourself in check. You can tell whether or not it's you pushing the table or the table pushing you. So keep an eye on the needles and if you can see the needle moving, you'll know it's you moving the board around so you can try and really focus on just pushing down. So let's see what happens this time. So yes, the table is no longer turning because the volunteers can keep themselves in check. They can see if the needle moves, be aware that they are pushing side to side, even if they didn't realise it, and stop themselves. As soon as the indicator was put on the table, the table turning stopped. And William Carpenter, a good friend of Faraday's, a sort of very prominent physiologist, called this involuntary muscular action, or as we would call it, numb thumb. And so they did not feel the table rotating. They did not appreciate that they were actually moving the ta table themselves. So Faraday's real problem um, with table turning and spiritualism was the way in which it was taken up seriously uh, by, by the educated middle class uh, in Britain. And that's what really appalled him, that the state of scientific education was so poor uh, that these people were willing to accept uh, this kind of, these kind of ideas. But this didn't quite disencourage people from still going to seances and it was very much a spectacle, very much an experience. And pe people did flock there a little bit, like you flock to see a magic trick, even though, you know, perhaps it isn't quite scientific, perhaps it isn't quite true. Maybe there's still a chance there is something there. And this is why, even though scientists became involved to debunk these things, it still um, was quite popular and remained popular for quite a long time. <laughs>